After just three years of playing chess, the oldest chess club in America named him a USCF master. He won the Life Master title, and he's the youngest to do it. Here is the rise and fall of this controversial chess grandmaster. Although Neiman won the life title, it would be two long years before he qualified as a fight master. However, his lack of formal training in classical chess meant that a whole year would pass before he would make any progress towards becoming an IM. Uh, how many IM rooms do you have thus far? I have none so far. In 2016, he effortlessly got his first IM norm, placing first in the under-18s at the North American Championships. Neiman's career took a monumental turn earlier in his life. He was taught by John Grief. Grief was a national champion. John Grief? Yes! And uh, I was actually uh, Love John Grief. in light of this entire situation. But he passed away in 2013, and hiring another coach wasn't an option. Neiman simply couldn't afford it. However, this didn't hold him back, because he wanted to become a GM. My first Scholastic National was the 2013 Super Nationals. Only 3 months and 28 days after my first rated US chess tournament, I remember entering the famous Gaylord Hotel with excitement, anxiety and most importantly a powerful motivation to win. I distinctly remember seeing all the top players like Luke Velotti and Atulia Shetty fighting it out on stage. I realised that if I dedicated everything to chess, I could be up on stage holding that first place trophy. In 2018, Neiman competed in the US Masters Championship earning his first IM norm and also his first GM norm. He competed among top GMs, hundreds of ELO higher than him, and finished 28. In that same month, he qualified as an IM, proudly earning his final IM norm at the Cambridge Invitational. Isn't he an IM? Yes he is. Gonna be a GM someday soon too, I bet. Following these achievements, Neiman made a crucial decision in 2019 that changed his career forever. He moved to Columbia Grammar Prep School, a private school that produced GMs like Mark Arnold and Joel Benjamin. He quickly found himself in the 103rd Edward Lasker Memorial, tying for first place and achieving his second GM norm. However, the travel industry grinded to a halt, and the pandemic stood between Neiman and his final GM norm. The pandemic was a global crisis for everyone and over the board chess. Wow. Every state began to shut down one by one in March 2020, and a chess tournament was the last thing on people's minds. At the same time, many grandmasters found themselves with a lot of free time. Some decided to study while others decided to stream. Among these streamers was Hans Niemann. He wasn't particularly funny. You're saying that if I win, if I win, they want me to go on a date with you on stream. And he doesn't appeal to a broad audience. Other times, he was more focused on his heart rate than chess. Hi. But he showed a true passion for chess. And as of filming this video, he has tens of thousands of followers. The rules eased in October 2020, and over the board events reopened. Neiman secured his third and final GM norm at the Charlotte Chess Centre. However, in an interview, he said he didn't care about his title. What Neiman did care about was Twitch, so he started to collab with big chess streamers. As the pandemic slowly died down and life somewhat normalised, Neiman received a rejection from his dream school, Harvard. Neiman did an interview where he was visibly upset. It was either Harvard or nothing, so he took a year out, and he decided to advance his career if Harvard wasn't an option. But streaming as a new GM wasn't enough, especially when there are figures like Danya, Hikaru, and Gotham. So he pursued over the board chess with an option to return to streaming full time. Neiman swiftly became aware of the fact that there was a huge gap in knowledge, and he had little time to prepare. He needed more knowledge and experience to have a chance at beating Super Grand Masters. So he hired Maxime Dugi. But classical chess is different from bullet chess. It takes years of training to be competitive. However, a steep rise is not unheard of. Grandmasters like Levon Aronian rose sharply in the rankings at a similar age. The difference between Aronian and Neiman is that Boris Gelfand described Aronian as the most striking player around with the highest creative level in terms of both openings and original ideas in the middle game. But Neiman loses to 10th graders and blunders completely winning positions. Other Super Grand Masters are simply left mind boggled by his poor game analysis, and respected figures in chess simply aren't a fan. Okay, first of all, I'm not a Hans fan. I'm the opposite of a Hans fan. 
but in the Crypto Cup he faced Magnus Carlsen for the first time, and nobody expected what would happen next. He won that game and commentators were in disbelief. Neiman dominated Magnus. This kind of thing is rare, especially against a world champion with white pieces. And Neiman had an epic reply after beating Magnus. Ounce, yesterday was a terrible uh, day for you and today you start out with a masterpiece. How would you summarize it? Just speaks for itself. Following the Crypto Cup, Neiman went into the third round of the Seinfeld Cup against Magnus Carlsen, and he beat him again. In an interview, Neiman said, it was a draw? Yes. I think he's just so demoralized because he's losing to such an idiot like me, you know? It's just, uh, it must be embarrassing for the world champion. Following this defeat, Magnus resigned from the Seinfeld Cup. Carlsen's move the following day was even more unexpected. He didn't say much as to why, except for cryptic tweets that reference a quote by Roma head coach Jose Not Mourinho. To not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. In big trouble. And I don't want to be in big trouble. And he quietly changed his Instagram status. Magnus essentially hinted that Neiman was cheating. And in a rematch game, he resigned. The same film cup, but everything else oh, is still sorry, Alejandro. The air. Sorry, Alejandro. I just have to interrupt you uh, because the game started. Um, and Magnus has logged off. What has happened? Magnus has resigned. What? There's no way Carlson resigned. Magnus resigns? Did he resign? Magnus resigns! This was important. It was the first time Magnus withdrew from a tournament. It might seem out of the blue, but his move was a bold protest against the tactics of Neiman. However, other grandmasters were suspicious of Neiman way before the Seinfeld Cup. Hikari watched Neiman's analysis of his Seinfeld Cup game against Magnus and was in disbelief. It just looked like he didn't know why he played those moves, and Nakamura was sure that Neiman was off. Ah uh, yes, of course, Bishop B3, Bishop B3, right? B3 yeah. Yeah. This is really yeah. weird. But, like this analysis is not 2700 level yeah, analysis. You have a sacrifice material. Neiman was not in a good position and he needed to clear his name. On an interview after a draw in the fifth round to Alejandro Ramirez, Neiman saw an opportunity to clear his name. But Neiman admitted live that he only cheated when he was 12 and 16 years old. And for that, he was Father, sorry. When I was 12 years old, I have never, ever, ever, and I would never do that. That is the worst thing I could ever do, cheat in a tournament with prize money. Now I made that mistake, and this is something, it's not something I was doing consistently. Never when I was streaming did I cheat, never did I misrepresent my strength. So I made this mistake, I was confronted by Chess.com, I had fully admitted, and I stopped playing Chess.com. A few grandmasters came forward with comments. Um, very quickly, and I, I had a feeling based purely on intuition, like his decision to play G4 yeah. was a surprise, I mean he played it, I don't know, within like two minutes, I, I was very surprised. I basically like stepped away from the board thinking, okay, it's a complicated position, and now it's he's going to take a long time and then the G4 gets splitzed out and I was like Following these events, Neiman was upset. The chess world was turning against him. He made a reputation for himself in the chess world for the wrong reasons. However, these were just comments and there wasn't concrete evidence to show he cheated over the board. Following the Seinfeld Cup, chess.com quietly banned Neiman. Daniel Wrench personally wrote to Neiman's following his public defense of his ban. Where Neiman's told Wrench that having a higher rating would mean people tune into more of my streams when I'm battling Hikaru, Danya, or Eric. I need people to believe that I'm a worthy rival to follow and subscribe. Wrench explained that he gave Neiman's numerous chances because of his age, and he tried to guide Neiman's, but his cheating was rampant in prize events too. Their systems flagged Neiman's strength score as suspicious, so they had to confront him. Another top 105 player with 2,700 ELO was on that table. When he confronted to cheating in prize events, he immediately confessed to using outside help. In this report, Wrench essentially said that Neiman didn't casually use a cheat engine. He was using it to win tournaments and make a name for himself. So the increasing concern regarding fair play and Chess.com's first million dollar prize led to Neiman's ban. However, in October 2022, Neiman filed a lawsuit against Carlson, Chess.com and other defendants. Neiman claimed that Carlson accused him of cheating without evidence because the young prodigy would further blemish his multi-million dollar brand by beating him again. Neiman would claim collusion and that Chess.com in collusion with Carlson and Play Magnus immediately banned him from its website and future events. The report says otherwise. And the streamer Hikaru Nakamura colluded with Magnus to publish hours of video content attempting to bolster Carlson's cheating allegations. Neiman claims he was at the top of his career and Magnus's actions essentially destroyed it. The accusations were slander and unlawful according to Neiman's. However, criticizing people is not a crime and calling them cheaters where their substantial evidence is not actionable. Chester Com has given substantial evidence for their claims and Neiman even recognized them at his own admission. 
The growth in concern in fair play has meant platforms have to enforce their rules. In the past, some grandmasters have been outspoken about cheating, where top players aren't punished severely enough. They're given a slap on the wrist and are allowed to play again, which is bad for chess.